Welcome back to the RipeWave Audio community, where we explore together all types of home audio systems from hi-fi to home theater. My name is John, and for this video, we report on the adoption of immersive formats in AV receiver processors available in 2020 and address the question, who's winning? Immersive movie formats were made available for home theater applications in the last de decade, but their adoption has been slow. However, we are now seeing that AV processor receivers uh, are supporting these by default, with only a few exceptions. Dolby and DTS have long been rival format companies and have traded top positions over the years. Occasionally, other companies have attempted to offer an alternative to these leaders in surround sound, such as when uh, a Odyssey launched DSX as uh, an early entry for 9.1 and 11.1 speaker configurations. This time, Oral 3D uh, beat out the two big uh, surround sound players with an immersive format, and IMAX Enhance aims to enhance the DTS experience. Immersive audio is designed to envelop the audience with sound that's adding the height dimension that was missing from traditional ear level surround sound formats. We will provide a quick overview of the immersive formats before we jump into the results of our analysis. Dolby Atmos. Dolby introduced Atmos in 2014 to expand on the traditional 7.1 surround sound base of Dolby True HD by adding the ability to have up to 128 simultaneous objects within the soundtrack it is possible to assign moving objects to a matrix of height and ceiling speakers with the processor handling the math to determine what speakers get the signal and when to recreate a motion path. As th with the previous Dolby format, Dolby prescribes speaker layouts to simplify and standardize deployments. Currently, 22.1.10 is the largest supported layout for 32-channel high-end processors. DTS arrived a year later with DTS-X to counter Dolby Atmos. The DTS approach also builds on the traditional 5-7 to seven channel base. However, DTS decided not to prescribe any speaker positioning so it would be compatible with more speaker configurations that may exist or come in the future for the home. Furthermore, DTS-X does not place a hard limit on object counts. However, DTS-X is limited to 11.1 .1 speaker counts. It is this limitation that has given Dolby Atmos more runway to be more successful with those looking to leverage the full capabilities of 16 plus channel processors. However, DTS would step up in their second act, DTS-X Pro. Now, Act 2 came in 2019 for DTS with their introduction of DTS-X Pro, which extended the speaker count of the original DTS-X past 12 channels with support for up to 32 speakers. IMAX Enhanced. IMAX, uh, who had been widely known for delivering exceptional cinema experiences, decided to jump into the home market in an effort to provide an elevated experience for the home theater, similar to what they had accomplished for the commercial environments. IMAX Enhance launched in 2018 to provide IMAX Enhance Master Content IMAX Enhanced Certified Devices and IMAX Enhanced Rendered Playback of that content on those devices per the IMAX standards. To deliver the sound, IMAX had to deviate from their theater approach. That theater approach being using full range speakers and no LFE channels. Instead, they now had to provide a mix, 
more aligned with home applications with an LFE channel. To accomplish this, IMEX Enhance builds on DTS technology to provide their signature sound. IMAX Enhance also addresses video playback and competes with Dolby Vision in that regard. Oral 3D. Oral Technologies was actually the first company to enter the immersive home market. Their approach is to have up to three defined layers, a normal ear level, which is level one, surround. Uh, to this, they add an upper height layer two, and an optional layer three, top or overhead layer. The Oral 9.1 layout was introduced in 2006 and used five channel base with four height speakers in the second layer. Oral 10.1 launched at the same time provided the ability to add a voice of God channel in the center of the ceiling above the audience. In 2010, Oral 3D was expanded with Oral 11.1 layout, which increased layer two with a center height speaker. Oral 13.1 was introduced simultaneously and added two rear surrounds at layer one to the Oral 11.1 layout and can serve as a good expansion for those with 7.1 deployments. Now, regardless of the speaker layout used, Oral 3D is a fully discrete system without the use of objects as with Atmos and DTSX. Oral Max. For the Oral 3D format to incorporate more channels, they decided to partner with Barco and develop a solution that uses objects to fill in with speakers beyond the Oral 13.1 deployment up to 22.1 or 26.1 installations. Now currently, Oral Max, which was introduced in 2015, only exists for commercial cinema with no support found in home processors or movie distribution. Now, for the RipeWave audio report on who's winning, after an inspection of 138 AV processor receiver models, which have been available in 2020, we have the following data. Dolby Atmos and DTSX come in with an equal and commanding share of processor support at 91%. DTSX Pro, which arrived late to the party in 2019, naturally has the lowest number of processor support at only 12%. While IMAX Enhance only has an extra year in the market over DTSX Pro, it has already made its way into 42% of these models. Now, given it is an enhancement to DTSX, uh, implementations shouldn't be too hard for companies willing to pay the license fee for this capability. At 34%, Oral 3D uptake has been a bit disappointing. Many regard this format as having a superior immersive experience. However, given that Oral Technologies is a much smaller company than the two big ones, uh, Dolby and DTS, and that the availability of content is much less than the others, the lower percentage, despite being on the market far longer isn't surprising either. Winning by year. To look deeper into how these formats are trending, we assembled a table that shows adoption over the years. Now, keep in mind that we only included data for models sold in 2020. So these numbers don't reflect models which were discontinued before RipeWave audio analysis was conducted over the last few months. Albeit, it does include a few models which have since been discontinued, were launched prior to 2020, and models that have been announced in 2020 but have yet to ship. 
What we can gather from this table is that all formats have experienced growth over the last few years. The level of support available in the oldest model models is the result of software upgrades. We have not observed manufacturers dropping support uh, for any of these formats once they're added to a range. Winning by brand. We have found there is only a few models that don't support Dolby Atmos and those are at or below 7.1 channels of processing. Now this makes sense as the value of Atmos diminishes as channel count drops. The same observation holds true for DTSX, as DTSX is supported on every model that supports Dolby Atmos. Now this we see as a win for the consumer, as you don't have to pay close attention to whether a movie uh, is distributed with DTSX or Dolby Atmos. It's going to play back with the immersive content. DTSX Pro is found on many of the newest models, but that isn't always the case, as with the exclusion of DTSX Pro by Audio Control, Denon, Marantz, Lingdorf, Macintosh, Monoprice, for some or all of their 2020 models, despite having enough channels to support DTSX Pro. In total, only 10 of the 26 brands we reviewed, that's 38%, have a DTSX Pro offering. The lowest cost DTSX Pro receiver is the Denon AVR X6700H, which sells for $2,499. IMAX enhanced support seems to be growing fast, but half of the 26 brands have yet to adopt it at all, perhaps holding out to save licensing fee for what may be perceived as a minor increase in performance. Upgraded and new models are more likely to have IMAX Enhanced support. Unlike DTSX Pro, with IMAX Enhanced, it is possible to add it to lower channel count models. Uh, IMAX Enhance is available in models starting at as low as $679, as with the Onkyo TXNR797. Now finally, we look at Oral 3D adoption by brand. Again, 50% of the brands are on board. But this is a different group of 13 brands than IMAX Enhance. The trend we see is that Oral 3D is most popular with the premium and home cinema brands like Datasat, Audio Control, Lingdorf, Storm Audio, and Trinoff having the widest adoption. However, we are starting to see support among the lower tiers such as Amarantz with their 2020 release, the SR6015 model which sells for $1,599. In conclusion, the cost of entry for immersive audio is the highest of all formats given the number of speakers and channels of amplification required. These formats also require um, a willingness to technically make it all work, which excludes those who are looking for the soundbar simplicity. The adoption of these formats is therefore targeted towards the enthusiasts. Given the numbers, it appears that both Dolby Atmos and DTSX are firmly entrenched and likely to supplant the 5.1 and 7.1 formats as the de facto standards, as DTSX Pro is fully compatible with DTSX, it has a strong life as well but availability is likely to be limited as this variant needs over 12 channels, a count that never will reach the masses. Oral 3D will continue to be well-regarded niche solution and a format that is likely to be included in every custom home cinema 
installation so the user can experience any and all formats at will. However, RipeWave Audio does not see Oral 3D reaching the same levels as the others. The fate of IMAX Enhance will be determined by the level of improvement it actually delivers. If it does, consumers will continue to demand support, not because of a novelty, but because it delivers on the promise. Otherwise, it will fade out like THX. If you are considering or have one of these immersive formats, we would appreciate hearing from you. Do you consider DTSX Pro? Oral 3D or IMAX Enhance must have features in a processor receiver today. What do you feel provides the best experience? That feedback would be useful to the RipeWave audio community. Furthermore, if you enjoyed this video and are interested in enhancing your audio experience, please like and subscribe to this RipeWave audio community and be sure to select the bell icon so you'll be notified as soon as the next video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience. Thank you.